you take the practice of law seriously, no matter how big or small the issue, and depending on the situation of the client, it's big at least to that person. It's a special role. Um, but it's fair to say the magnitude that you operated with was much higher. I wonder if you could walk us through both from your experience how you did that, uh, which I just think is interesting, uh, sure. about when and how the United States can uh, use force and what legal limits there are. That is a very weighty responsibility. I took it very seriously my four years in that office to the point where I made a habit of watching the video of every drone strike I authorized. I gave the legal authorization to because I wanted to be reminded constantly of the gravity of what it was I was giving a legal approval for and I would learn something new every time I watched uh, one of these operations. Did you ever right say out. no? Yes, I said no from time to time. And I will tell you saying no is harder than saying yes. Because saying no is like stopping an 80 mile an hour 100 car freight train that is barreling down the track because there's some really bad guy in some part of the world we want to kill. The, the test for those four years for me was the 2001 AUMF, which was passed by Congress one week after 9-11 and essentially authorized uh, the president and our military to go after the planners, organizers of the 9-11 attack and those who harbored them, i.e. Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and associated forces. And so for four years, um, I would want to assure myself that whoever the military objective was or whatever group it was, was part of those two groups or an associated force. And we think the 2001 AUMF fits any military operation against Iran, the government of Iran. Um, but in my judgment, the president does have Article II constitutional authority to conduct a military operation in response to the attack on our drone. And the House of Representatives voted this week to limit the authorities under the 9-11 authorization. Is that a good Correct. idea? Well, as long as it's not just repeal, it's got to be repeal and replace. I do believe as a... That applies to health care and war then? Or? Yes. Uh, I do believe that... Grim legal joke. As a, as a political matter, our Congress needs to get back into the business of authorizing war. I think Congress should take ownership of its responsibility in this regard and not simply leave it to executive branch lawyers to come up with legal theories to try to jam a whole lot into the 2001 AUMF. In my judgment, the terrorist threat has become much more amorphous. Uh, it's not cabined as much as it was in the period right after 9-11. Um, you could have very interesting debates about what a, a, an armed force authorization should look like. One thing it should not be is sort of a worldwide, endless authorization to deplore lethal force anywhere in the world if we see a terrorist threat. It should not be a substitute for law enforcement, for criminal justice. And I think as a matter of laws of armed conflict, there has to be some definition of the non-state terrorist group for which the military is authorized to go against.